Welcome to Evolution. My name is Andre Lawrence and this is my channel about electric cars from a different perspective. Today I'm at the 2023 Montreal Electric Car Show and there are a ton of different electric cars here from a wide variety of manufacturers as well as a prototype, the Project Arrow, and I have access to it. So you want to find out more? Stick around, I'll show you in 10 seconds. I'm starting at the Hyundai Canada booth because they've got the Ionic 6 here and heads up on May 8th, I will have an Ionic 6 for a full week to be able to dig into it, compare it to my EV6 and give you a full car review. Now with that being said, let's have a quick tour of the floor. We'll start the show off a little bit stronger than I anticipated. I didn't think the Polestar Roadster would be here today, but it is. So I'll give you a quick tour of what it looks like up close right now. The Polestar Roadster's design is really beautiful, and I don't know when we'll be seeing the production version, but I really hope that I do get the chance to review it. The interior of the Polestar Roadster is very familiar for anybody who's been in the Polestar 2. I look forward to getting my hands on one and playing with some of the features. From this angle, can you guess which electric vehicle that I'm sitting in? Well, I'm in the Volkswagen booth, and they've got the ID Buzz. Let's have a quick look inside. Being a minivan, the trunk has a ton of room, and it's got this little parcel shelf. Middle seats are fine, and then you've got the front. Let's go take a look at the details. Well, if you've been in a Volkswagen ID anything, this will be very familiar. There's a small center console for bottles and cups and things. You've got a surprisingly small glove box. And you've got a couple of cup holders in here with some little springy things in the middle. And you've got this deep pocket that may be a wireless charger, but it's got some USB ports above it, so I'm guessing you can use that for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. But unfortunately, it still has these no-feeling buttons. I couldn't stop by the Montreal Electric Car Show without stopping at the Kia booth, seeing as I've got two electric Kias at my house. Though this is the 2023 Kia Nero EV in its new form. So let's have a quick look. The rear seat of the new Nero EV is pretty much identical in terms of space to my old Nero EV, and that's just from a quick, I sat in it and had a look. One major advantage they have here is they're using the seats from the Kia EV6. These are much thinner, allowing for a little bit more leg room, especially because of the form of the shape that they've got here that's a little bit more rounded. Something that I just noticed with the design of these new seats is that in this version of the Nero EV, I can slide my feet underneath. Now in my old Nero EV, with the seat a little bit lower, I was unable to do it. And with the seat all the way up, it was a bit of a tight fit. The first thing I notice when I sit in the new version of the Nero EV is how much the interior looks like the EV6. Having been in my EV6 for over a year now, this is very, very familiar. We've got the main cluster, a little bit smaller than the one in my EV6. This slopes downwards and the screen is definitely smaller than in my EV6. But we've got the same touch panel as on the EV6 as well for the map navigation and radio and then the climate control. Then you've got the center console and again it's got the same problem as the old one and I don't know why they didn't correct this in this version. The center console in the Nero EV tilts over to the right. That means that if you're a passenger your feet end up getting into the back corner and you're pushed a little bit to the right. My wife found this very uncomfortable in my old Nero EV, and it looks like it's gonna be the same thing in this new version. But anybody who owns an EV6 and gets into a Nero EV will be very at home. What I don't like is that they still put piano black finish. I have no idea why manufacturers keep doing this. It scratches, it gets dust, and after a short amount of time, it looks terrible. And when the sun shines on it, you're blinded while you drive. Why do you keep doing that, Kia? Of course, at the Kia booth, they've got the EV6 GT. The interior of the EV6 GT is almost identical to the EV6 GT line. The major difference is this seat, or the front seats. Essentially, these are not electric powered, they're manual. Although, I find them rather comfortable, a little bit surprised, but I am a small frame guy, so somebody who's a little bit larger may find the bolsters a little uncomfortable. Something I find interesting with these seats is they are a little bit more slim and they offer more, more knee room. It's interesting, I didn't expect that to be a difference. Another main difference inside the GT version of the EV6 is I have this button, but I don't have this button. That's the magic press it and get stuck to your seat button. That's what unlocks all of the power, much like in the GV60's boost button. The rest, pretty much the same. Making an appearance at the Montreal Electric Car Show is the Nissan Ariya. 
Now the vehicle is a little bit bigger than I had anticipated. The first time I saw it, I was a little bit surprised. Another thing that surprised me though was the feeling of the car versus the value. Now the car costs quite a bit of money or the crossover utility vehicle. I find that the plastic finish is a little bit, I don't know, not up to the price of the vehicle. Let me show you what I mean. For many years, one of the things that people have used as a gauge for quality of a vehicle, and this is totally subjective and means absolutely nothing, but it's the way the car door handle and the door closing and opening feels. And, well, I'm not 20, I'm in my 50s, so I kind of still have that as a reflex. And the first time I grabbed the door handle on the Nissan Area, my feeling was that the door was very, very light. The handle is kind of plasticky and a little bit I don't know, it, it flexes up and down, and the closing, it just feels plasticky. I, I don't know how else to explain it. It's, it's not like in several other vehicles that I've tried, the Polestar, very, very robust door, the EV6, obviously, very robust. The feeling of those other vehicles just gives you the impression of something that's solid. This one, not so much. One of the nice things about the area is the size of the vehicle. Now, the trunk is actually quite large, and it's something that has a few little features that I thought were pretty interesting. Now, the first thing that I wish my car had is this second button up here. Now, you've got the regular button that is to open and close the trunk. Then you've got another button right beside it. It's got a little lock symbol, and that'll lock and unlock all of the doors of the vehicle. Something else I thought was pretty cool was the way the floor has been partitioned. Now, they've got two little covers that are separate in the back of the vehicle, allowing for access to the front portion of the under trunk, and you can stand it up as a divider. That's pretty neat. Now, another thing that they do that I think is pretty interesting is to use the sides that are a little bit deeper, much like in a Tesla Model Y. So, trunk space, pretty big, very well designed. Something I find interesting about the Nissan area is that the interior is very familiar. Now it seems that multiple manufacturers are doing what Kia and Cadillac has done. As you can see, the steering wheel has a very similar design with the flat bottom as the EV6. And then you've got the single panel that has the touchscreen is on this side and this portion. Oh, there's the outline. And then you've got the instrument cluster that's in the center. Second screen is right there. And then it's got this interesting center console shift knob thingy. Here's this center console shifter. Slides back, up, it's got this little push button, and again on the side, and these I'm guessing light up when the car is on. So, interesting design. The interior is nice, the fit and finish is nice, but the plastics again are a little bit on the cheap side. Here's that plastic that I was talking about. This is kind of cheap feeling and not quite on par with the quality that I would have expected in a vehicle of this price. And of course you've got the Ford F-150 Lightning that has to be here because who doesn't want a pickup truck today? This is a production version. You've got the tough bed version here. This is a nice rugged finish on the inside. Let's go look at the interior. Obviously Ford brought the platinum version of this vehicle which starts at $121,000 Canadian. But just to put that into perspective, if you're buying a gas-powered version, it can be about 90, 95,000 Canadian dollars. Now, what about the interior? Now, the quality of the fit and finish is really, really nice. I'm actually kind of surprised. I hadn't really seen the interior of this. You've got the instrument cluster, a ton of buttons on the steering wheel, the nice center touchpad with that little knob on the bottom. Got a wireless charging pad and a pretty cool shifter that pops up. Now the reason it lays down is you can fold this out to make a workspace. Pretty cool, Ford. It has the same central touchscreen as in the Mustang Mach-E with the same little knob in the middle. Something I find interesting is that in this one, the center knob is rather tight and feels quality. Whereas in the Mustang Mach-E GT that I had sat in a year or two ago, I thought it was kind of cheapy and loose feeling. It just, it didn't feel premium. So it's nice to see that that seems to have been resolved. Since this is an electric version of the Ford F-150, there's nothing under the front hood. That made for an extremely large front trunk. There's some nice features in here, including several power outlets and USB outlets. You've got an escape button, so if you get locked into the front trunk, you can press the button to pop it open. You've also got some LED lights with this light button. And then underneath, you've got some storage, which is actually an ice box. Now, this means that you can put ice in here, because there is a drain in the bottom to let the water out once the ice is melted. 
At the last Electric Car Show, I had the privilege of recording the pre-production version of the Cadillac Lyric. Well, fortunately today, they actually have a production version, so now we get to have a really good look at what this vehicle looks like in its finished form. One of the things I find very interesting about the Cadillac Lyric is its sheer size. This vehicle is enormous, so if you're in Europe in a small city with small tight roads, this might not be the vehicle you want to look into. The trunk is huge because of the dimensions of this vehicle. I mean, I... The seats are not down, and I can almost lay down in the back of this. It's, it's insane. So in terms of luggage space and trunk storage, it is leaps and bounds beyond the EV6, uh, which is not a small vehicle. Something else that we've got here is the under trunk storage. And the under trunk storage, uh, much like in the Tesla Model Y, is rather deep, so a nice use of the dedicated EV platform. And if you raise this up, Something that is taken directly from the book from Kia is the ability to hide the tunnel cover or the trunk cover right underneath here, which is something I think every manufacturer should be doing because nobody wants to take out a cover and then have to go in the house to store it. So well done Cadillac. Something that I noticed the first time that I saw the pictures of the interior of the Cadillac Lyric is who from Kia did they speak to or did they hire? The inside of this thing looks a lot like the Kia EV6. Now very specifically with regards to the screen layout, I've got two massive screens or one giant screen, it's hard to tell. And then you've got this central floating console just like in the Kia EV6 and the shift knob right here or what looks like a shift knob, it's actually the controls for the touchscreen that sits in the center of this console. So very nice design, very familiar for me who drives an EV6. And once again, the interior, it's a big car. So the interior is very spacious and these seats are super comfortable. Oh, this is a vehicle that I'd love to get my hands on from the press fleet to do a full review and actually put it beside my EV6 to show you how much bigger it is because the EV6 is not a small car by any means, but this thing is, is a beast. One of the electric vehicles that I haven't had a chance to get my hands on or really dig into is the BMW iX. I've got an xDrive 40 behind me, so let's have a quick look at the interior as well as the trunk, and I'm curious to see how it compares to other vehicles that I've tried. As expected, the interior of the BMW iX is definitely high quality and well finished. The design of the vehicle is very nice. It has a little bit of a take on the Kia, but there is a definite difference here where the instrument cluster and central touchscreen panels that are integrated into one unit are actually kind of floating off of the dashboard. I think it's a very interesting design. One thing that I thought was interesting is the central console has this floating design, a little bit similar to the Kia EV6 as well, but as opposed to the shifter being this rotating knob, it's actually the media controls. So what about the back seat of the BMW iX? Well, much as I expected, because the front has a ton of room and the vehicle is quite long, the rear seat has a lot of room. Now, one thing that I noticed that is very interesting and a step up over other electric vehicles in the market is the fact that this rear seat is designed in a way, and the front seat as well, where I can put my feet far underneath the front, be very comfortable, and have my thighs supported by the seat. That means that on a longer trip, unlike some other vehicles where your legs are kind of high up and floating in the air, this will allow you to be more relaxed, not be as fatigued, and be very comfortable. So, good one BMW, nice job. I was about to close the door on this vehicle and go on to my next one, but then I noticed something rather interesting. It seems that BMW took a cue from the i3 and integrated a composite carbon or some sort of material into the structure of the vehicle. Now, this explains a little bit more why this vehicle costs the price that it does. Having this kind of advanced technology offers light, rigid structure and has an advantage over metal or other composites. Now, what about the trunk space? Now, based on the size of the vehicle, it should be pretty impressive. Let's have a quick look. Now, the back of the iX has definitely got a ton of room and it's got this hard cover on the top that can be removed. Unfortunately, there's no storage space for the cover underneath like you have in the Cadillac Lyric and on the Kia EV6 and the Kia Nero EV, et cetera, et cetera. But it's not a major inconvenience, just a little bit strange that they didn't think about putting a space underneath this floor. Now, one thing that compares to the Tesla Model Y and Model 3 is they've utilized this dedicated platform to put a giant storage space, and this is really deep, to allow you to store a ton of extra stuff. Now, if you've got the subwoofer version, that'll be occupied by the subwoofer, but still, nice bonus. 
The last time I got to see the VinFast VF9 was at the launch event and unfortunately it was a clay model. You couldn't see the inside of the vehicle. Externally it looked very convincing, but now we get to have a look on the inside. As expected, the VF9 is much like the VF8 in terms of quality and luxury in terms of the way it feels. Interestingly is that this reminds me of the BMW iX with regards to quality of materials that are being used, which points in the direction that VinFast is going. They're not going for entry level, they're going for quality and something a little bit more high end. The fit finish is pretty amazing. First thing I wanted to mention is that there's no instrument cluster here, which is an interesting choice on the part of VinFast, but they do have all of the information on this very nice and colorful center touchscreen. I was really hoping that we would be able to see the final version of the Equinox EV and the Silverado EV, but unfortunately these are still the alpha or prototypes or whatever they are, like we saw at the Montreal Auto Show earlier on. Now, unfortunately, that means that we can't see what it looks like up close, can't touch them or open the doors, and we'll have to be a little bit more patient to see the final versions. Now, with that being said, let's continue. And of course, Chevrolet had the Corvette E-Ray starting at 128,000 Canadian dollars and is only 0.1 seconds faster from 0 to 60 than the Corvette Z06. And interestingly enough, or sadly enough, the all-electric range of this vehicle is 5 miles or 8 kilometers. So, yeah, there's that. Sadly, this is the last year that the Chevrolet Bolt will be in production. It is the least expensive electric car that you can get with decent range and good technology and is actually a quality vehicle. Now, this is not GM's booth. This is actually a Chevy dealer that's local to the area. Both Subaru and Toyota were at the car show, and even though this vehicle is essentially discontinued to be replaced by a new platform in 2025, at least they tried. Something that was a very big surprise was that the fast booth, which was supposed to have my Kia EV6 with the fast wheels on it, actually got access to the Project Aero Canadian-made prototype electric vehicle. Guess what kind of wheels they've got? These are one-off fast EV wheels specifically for Project Aero. They are one of the Canadian companies that worked on making this all Canadian or almost 100% Canadian made. Now, you may think you might not be able to see the inside, but let's go have a look at the other side. A little while ago, just before winter, I made a video about the Fast Company and how they make wheels and that it's a Canadian company. Now, something that's really cool is that this vehicle is actually almost 100% Canadian made. A lot of people don't know that technology in Canada for the automotive industry is huge. And we have almost everything to build a complete vehicle. And guess what? This thing is pretty much that. Now, this is a one-off prototype and not everything would be as it is if it ever got produced. And I'm really hoping that it does because I would be one of the first in line to get one. Who says that we can't make exciting cars? Look at this incredible suicide door wide opening. Something very, very cool are these hinges. And I'll put some B-roll up on the screen for you to see because it's really cool. These doors open up 90 degrees and offers this incredible opening. Something else that I thought was really, really cool. And I saw a product that was aftermarket that was on Shark Tank at one point. And it's this little step. Now this step is part of the vehicle and also acts as the hooks for the doors when they close. So just another little detail that was pretty interesting, but let's have a look at the inside up close. There's some really cool technology in here. Now on the inside of the Canadian Project Aero electric vehicle, there's some really interesting features. Now the first thing you might notice is that on the passenger side, this entire section is a screen. I'm not sure if it's a touch screen, I'm not really allowed to touch anything, but fortunately we get to see a couple other pretty interesting things, even though we can't touch them. You can see them up close. The vents are integrated right into the dash and they've got these little knobs that allow you to adjust the direction of the airflow. Another thing that I thought was pretty interesting is this glass roof. Now I'll show you some b-roll of what it looks like but that orange tint that you see is actually a graphene solar panel integrated into the glass. That is made by a Quebec based company so shout out to my fellow Quebecers. Amazing technology and it looks really cool. One of the first things that I saw when I looked at the inside of this vehicle is this really cool touchscreen. And as you can see in the center, it's got a really neat curve. That probably makes it pretty easy to access the controls that are at the bottom of this because your hand gets to get onto the shifter knob. The back seat of the vehicle is actually something that's also pretty interesting because it's more like a living room than the back seat of a car. Now these are electrically operated rear seats that slide forward and backward and they seem to offer some pretty good support. One thing that I do find really impressive is that even though this is a prototype and a one-off, the fit and finish of this thing is quite impressive. I'll show you the door cards. It's really cool because there's something that's pretty neat. 
There are speakers that aren't speakers. These are transducers. So no openings for dust, no liquid can get in, and you still get amazing sound. Again, Canadian product. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is a car that's made in Canada, and these wheels, being in the fast booth, are obviously Fastco wheels. These are one-off wheels that were designed specifically for this vehicle, and as I've talked about in an interview with Ian Pavelko, the Director of Technical Services at Fastco, they're designed for optimal efficiency. If you want to find out more about these wheels and more about Fastco, I'll put a link to that video up here on the screen. It is a Canadian company that makes some amazing products that you can buy at any retail shop that carries the Fast brand and online. They are available in Canada and the US, so you might want to check that out. I'll have a link in the description below. Something else that's pretty cool and you might be wondering about are these little pop-outs. You might wonder why do the side marker flashers pop out of the vehicle? Well, that's because these are actually the side view mirrors. There's one on each side and they pop out when you drive. And inside, you've got little screens on each side of the vehicle that show you your side rear view. I've only touched on a very few parts of the technology that are integrated into this vehicle. It's pretty amazing stuff that you get to see. If you want to find out more about it, you want to check out APMA or the Automotive Parts Manufacturers Association website. I'll have a link to their site in the description below, much like I had in the description of that other video that I mentioned earlier. It's only fitting that I finish this video in front of the Hyundai booth because as I mentioned earlier in the video, I will be getting a press car from Hyundai Canada on May 8th. I will be getting the Ionic 6. That means that I'll be able to make a side-by-side -side comparison video like I usually do, this time with my Kia EV6. Now, with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking on that thumbs up because it tells the YouTube algorithm this video is worth sharing. And if you really enjoyed it and you want to tell me that you like my content, please consider clicking on that subscribe button and the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of my future videos because guess what? I have absolutely no posting schedule. And as usual, thanks for taking the time to watch my video. Welcome to Evil... Welcome. Well, a very interesting Project Arrow apparition and... Oh, sh apparition. Well... And this is my channel about electric cars from a different perspective. In today's episode... This is a car that I wasn't 100% sure would be here, but yet... I couldn't come to the Montreal Electric... And putting a one-panel design in the front of the dash, ah, schlatt. As I mentioned earlier, and in another, well, you know, in another video, one of the electrical vehicles on the, electrical? <laughs> let's have a look on the inside, and let's look at the trunk. I'm looking for a ah, frack. One of the vehicles that I really haven't researched, and I haven't had my, Let's have a look at the inside. I'm curious to see how it compares to the other electrical electrical vehicles. Again, electric, electric, André Boyan. Floating cluster as well as this touchscreen on the side. So as opposed to the Kia EV6, Kia EV6, wow. But all in all, the overall design is very nice. Not but, why would I say but? Are raised up and don't have any... Oh, sorry. No problem. That's all right we should very soon see the pre-production or at least the production version so that we, ah, that's total shit. If you want to find out more, you can check out APMA or the American uh, Frack Automotive Parts Manufacturers. Automotive Parts Manufacturers. Automotive Parts Manufacturers Association. Thank you. I will be getting an Ionic 6 press car and that's in the first or second week of February. Eh, February, may we? Try May, dummy because as I mentioned earlier in the video, I will be getting a, I, a Ionic 6, an Ionic 6, dummy. It's only fitting that I finish this video in front of the Hyundai Canada booth because the Ionic 6, <laughs> I really have a hard time. It's only fitting that I finish this video in front of the Hyundai booth because as I, as, uh, I mange mes mots, bon. It's only fitting that I finish this video in front of the Hyundai booth because as I mentioned earlier in this video, I will be getting an Ionic Sys Pre... Ionic Sys. Speak English or French, André? Choisy. Thumbs up button, it tells YouTube's algorithm that this video... <sighs> ...for a full week to discover and make a side-by-side -side comparison video with, and that totally screws up the video. Yeah, love the alarms. 
every time. Because as I mentioned earlier in the video, I will be... Take 2,000. <laughs> ah, this is sad. That's a lot of bloopers.